pot brownies. The petition is calling for the teen, uh, the charges of the teen rather, to be reduced, and it's been signed by over 100,000 people. It's just the latest example of the mounting tension between the new and emerging legal weed economy and the law. Colorado, Washington State in the U.S. have now legalized recreational marijuana use. There are seven other U.S. states that have decriminalized possession of small amounts of weed. And all of the federal parties here in Canada are seriously weighing a similar move. Weed now has the potential to be a big business. And that's what our next guest is banking on. Matt Gray is what you might call a serial entrepreneur. He starts up companies. Bitmaker Labs was his most recent success. But his new company is being built around the Stoner's Cookbook. It's a website with recipes, discussions, and other things connected to this weed economy. Uh, Matt is joining me now. So why did you decide to build your business around edible weed? So the edible economy is a massive business that's vastly growing. Uh, right now, marijuana is set to legalize in 14 more states over the next five years and go from what's currently about a $2.5 billion business to about $10.2 billion in five years. So where is it right now? As an industry, how would you describe its, its, its maturity at this point? It's a budding industry, no pun intended. A lot of... Uh, <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, kind of room to grow still. It, it was just legalized this year, right, in January, and they're slowly starting to come out with new regulations in Denver specifically, which is where we're based. And so now there's more, um, there's got to be more information given to people and more facts about the THC levels, the CD, CBD content. So we're gradually kind of shifting with that and trying to give people the information that they need to make. So there's still, there's still a bit of sketchiness to parts of it, right, obviously? Oh, for sure, yeah. for sure. I mean, it was an underground industry that's just gradually becoming legal now. So, so I mean, you mentioned you're based in Colorado, and it, you know, in some ways it seems to have descended on Colorado. They're kind of making it up on the fly, some of these regulations. Yeah. And I know in, in, in one case, uh, you know, they're looking at... Uh, you know, marking edible um, uh, products so yeah. that people know that they're not getting chocolate brownies; they're getting the other kind of brownies. Right. Is that a danger? Is it a dangerous business to be in at this stage when, when when governments are still struggling with what the regulatory regime is around it? Yeah, I think you definitely have to be careful. Um, our business specifically is more an ancillary business, so we're not actually ever touching the product. We're just giving people information on how to cook with marijuana, as well as different edible products out there. But if you're a grower and you know. The DEA is, you know, out getting a lot of these people and still investigating them. So you definitely have to be careful depending on where exactly you're located. Yeah, because as we mentioned, there's like this patchwork regulatory regime now. Yeah. In Texas, you got this guy who might be going to life in prison for, for making some pot brownies. Exactly. Is that, a, is, is that a potential problem as you're exploring this new weed economy that you could be an ex you know, auxiliary to uh, that kind of problem in another state? Yeah, there's a lot of risk right now. And as an entrepreneur, I think, you know, your job is to take calculated risks. And so I'm looking at the space right now. There's definitely... You know, a lot of areas we have to be careful with, but overall, I think it's a massive opportunity, really the opportunity of a lifetime, and I'm super excited to be in the space. Okay, so I mean, when you thought about this as a startup, first of all, what did your parents do? My parents now are accepting of it. I right, mean, right. yeah, back in the day, if I told them I was doing this, I'd be in a boot camp. Right, but you, 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 had, a, you had a track record. I mean, you've built companies before, so as you look at this industry, you have to make projections as a businessman five, ten years out. What does this industry look like, you think, in five years? Five years, I think it's mainstream. I think there's going to be a lot more research going into the medical benefits of marijuana, helping things like PTSD, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and I really see it just being massively adopted. So in five years, I see you know you being able to buy a Mr. Big chocolate bar or an edible product in that same store. And you're, I mean, that's your bet, right? Yeah. That's your bet that this is going to be something big. I mean, a lot of people compare it to you know the, the time that prohibition uh, lifted, and you could be Seagrams. Is that kind of what you're hoping to be? For sure, for sure. Yeah, no, it's about to open up, and I think there's going to be explosive growth over the next few little bit, and we're hoping to be right at the center of that. Okay, well, you're a content company, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. And so you're looking for some sort of advertising. Are the advertisers coming to the weed economy yet, or are they still kind of shied away from it? So right now, marijuana companies are actually not allowed to advertise on Facebook right. or on Google. So there's a massive opportunity for us with our community of about 4 million people now. Uh, a lot of these marijuana businesses want to advertise on our platform. So it's a huge opportunity that way because they can't advertise anywhere else. All right. Amazing new world. Congratulations for uh, getting in on it early, Matt. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Um, Stoner Cookbook. I should mention that one more time. You can just look it up. It's right there on the internet. Uh, one more thing we wanted to mention. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we told you about someone who had been uh, tweeting out hints to cash that they'd hidden all over San Francisco.